Come out to our Wednesday week service. This man up to sing. Come on. We're going to sing out He's in love. Let's sing out from the top. The land that was slain. away this evening. Let's open up our hearts to the King of Kings as we sing out this song. Let's sing I give myself. I give myself away. I give myself away. So you. Let's sing that again. I give myself. I give myself away. Sing out, here I am.
sing out tonight because here I am. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonder. Let's sing that out one more time because here I am. One more time, my life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Yes, God, we thank you. God, for your precious blood, God, that you are a miracle worker, God. You're a promise keeper, Lord God. And no once have you forsaken us, Lord God. God, we praise your holy name to see. Yes, we worship you, God. Hallelujah. Let's sing out this next song tonight, church. Let's sing it from the top. You are here.
stops working. Let's sing that again. Even when I don't see it. Yes, declare that church. Open your hearts to see it. Let's sing it out. Let's lift our voices. Even when I don't see it. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Wait, baby. this evening and we're going to go before God we're, be, we're going to believe that he's going to move this evening we're going to pray we're going to pray for our service tonight we're going to pray for Pastor Damien for anointing as he preaches the word this evening let's also pray for these faithful laborers for Pastor Johnny and Lucy new and there in Maryland and also Pastor T and my there in Papa Crow let's let's uplift them in prayer let's believe that God's going to help them in their services this evening amen and let's also pray for our personal needs let's lay all our personal needs at the foot of the cross because our God is a promise maker. He is a healer and God wants to help us this evening. Amen. We're going to pray as a church and I'm going to ask our brother Tommy if he can come and open us up in prayer. Let us pray, church. God, we thank you, God, for this time, God. We can come into your presence, God. I pray. Yes, let's praise your name. And Father God, we thank you for this service, Lord God. God, we ask you your presence, Lord God, tonight, God, that you minister to us, God. God, that your word, Lord God, will convict us, God. Convict our hearts, God. We pray for your covering, God, upon Pastor Damien as he preaches tonight, God. These faithful laborers, God, Pastor Johnny and Pastor T, God. I'm praying, Lord God, for a miracle, God, in their churches, God, that you'll continue to grow, Lord. God, we lift up every need before you, God, and we give you all glory and all thanks, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give God praise, church. Let's tell him how much we love him, Lord. Father, we exalt your name. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. What's up, church? Let's walk each other out. Amen, amen. We can find our seats this evening. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. We are the Potter's House Central. Amen. And if you are visiting with us, we'd like to especially welcome you out to us. And thank you for joining us this evening. Before we carry on tonight, we do have some announcements. 
Um, we have one announcement actually, amen, and that's Easter camp that is coming up. That is, amen, it's going to be a great time. Amen, that is coming up this Friday, and that's going down at Camp Adia uh, over there in Hunua. And we're meeting there this Friday at 9 a.m. on Friday. Okay, so Pastor has also sent out, sent out the schedule um, if you want to check that as well for more details. But we are meeting, meeting up at Camp Adia on Friday at 9 a.m. Also, um, please ensure that you check your checklist that we've sent out as well. You don't want to come and you don't have everything there. It might be a bit cold, so please ensure that you bring everything that is on uh, that camp list. Amen. Also, I want to encourage you, if you do have any board games or any sports equipment that you'd like to bring out, um, please do bring that along. They have uh, a massive field there. There's, there's going to be lots of space and a big area there for us to um, have some games. Um, so please bring along any games or any board games as well that you have with you that you want to bring along. Amen. And that is all our announcements for this evening. Amen. Let's, uh, we're going to take up an offering this evening. Let's give God praise as the ushers come forward. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, God, for this time of giving into your kingdom, Lord Jesus God. We thank you. Amen. Let's continue to give generously um, this evening. Um, and let's believe God to help us as we give tonight into the kingdom of God. And in saying that, I'm going to get Lani if he can pray for our offering this evening. Amen. Thank you, media team, sound team, and also our song service team. We do appreciate your labors. Um, amen. We're going to get straight into the Word of God tonight. It's good to have Mount Ruskell in the house and also to have Pastor Damien back preaching for us. Amen. Let's give him all the time in as he needs as he comes forward. Amen. amen. Praise God. Check one, two, two. Am I on? Amen. Praise God. Good to be in the house of God on a Wednesday night. Can you say Amen. Uh, we're going to have fun this evening, and uh, it's good to see what God is doing here in Central. Uh, good to always come back and see new faces, old faces, and uh, always encouraging for us uh, as the baby church coming back home uh, to the mother church. But we're going to believe God to help us this evening. Uh, before we do that, I just want to thank Pastor and Bex for this great opportunity to preach uh, before, before you all tonight. Uh, it's really my privilege to be here and uh, be um, preaching the Word of God, and no doubt God is going to help us and speak to you uh, this evening. And so if you have your Bibles... Uh, we're going to be looking at a few texts, uh, Exodus 1, uh, 8 to 10, and then we're going to be skipping to uh, verse 15 and 16 uh, for tonight. Amen. There's a lady by the name of Erin Gruel. Uh, she was an American teacher who was known for her unique ways of teaching, uh, and the way that she uh, dealt with students uh, was real unique uh, compared to other teachers. And so she shares in one of her interviews that her original profession wasn't to become a teacher, but rather she wanted to become a lawyer. And so she goes and she thinks about this and then she goes into uni, all, does all of that stuff. She graduates from uni and uh, she ends up teaching at a school in California called Woodrow Wilson High School. And so not only does she uh, get a job there, but she goes and she's teaching a class where it's assigned to, uh, where, where these only low performing students in the school, classes that no one else wanted to teach Previous teachers, they were there, they would always leave the class in the moment, they would always leave midterm, and they would leave the whole school in general. She shares how one student had recently come as she joined the school, and uh, she, uh, the student transferred from Wilson High School uh, from a rivalry school, and um, he, he got kicked out of his previous school because he had a gun, and he threatened uh, to use it against his teacher. 
And so we see here tonight the type of class, the type of people that Erin had to deal with as a teacher. Long story short, she saw a lot of children in this classroom. There was about 150 people that she taught. And uh, she saw so much children who were broken, who were hurt, who had no hope, who had no one to look up to. And she saw these people and she thought that they had potential. And so what does she do? She continues to teach them. It's hard for her. She's getting told off. She's getting papers thrown at her, everything. And um, like the story continues that over time, she saw these young kids and she saw what they could become if they had just been shown the right way. And so one thing that stood out to me was when she decided to uh, change her profession from a lawyer to a teacher, she said a couple of things. She says, I decided to be a teacher because I believe educating students could make more of a difference. And she also said, I thought by the time you're defending a kid in a courtroom, the battle was already lost. I think the real fight should happen here in the classroom. The reason why I share this story is because Erin grew up, she, she never saw troubled kids, but she saw people with potential. She recognized that these students could avoid getting into trouble, could avoid ending up in courtrooms if they were taught correctly in classrooms. And this evening, I want to tell you that God knows the potential for you and I, the plans and everything that he has in store for you and I. God knows right from the beginning from when you got saved. He uses ordinary people, just like you and I, to do extraordinary things in the kingdom of God. And this evening, I want to preach a sermon that I've entitled, People with Potential. Reading from our text, Exodus 1, 8 to 10 says, eventually, uh, uh, 1, 8 to 10, eventually a new king came to power in Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. He said to his people, look, the people of Israel now outnumber us and are stronger than we are. Verse 10, we must make a plan to keep them from growing even more if we don't. And if war breaks out, they will join our enemies and fight against us. Then they will escape from the country. Verse 15, then Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, gave this order to the Hebrew midwives, uh, Shiphra and Pua. When you help the Hebrew women as they give birth, watch as they deliver. If the baby is a boy, kill them. If it is a girl, let her live. And we need God this evening. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this evening that we can be here in your presence I'm praying, God, that you would help us, God, speak to your people, Lord. Help us to understand our worth in you, Lord, God, the potential that we have with you on our side, Lord, God. I pray, help us to reach the heights and new levels, God, of the potential that you have in store for our lives. We give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name, we all say, amen. amen. Let's look firstly this evening at the threat of potential. The devil hates people with potential, especially you and I this evening in the kingdom of God, where he gets exposed and when God is on the throne, the devil hates that. In our text, we see a clear example of people with potential, but we see the wickedness of Pharaoh, what he's trying to do, right? He, he makes all of these Israelites, turns them into slaves, and he uses them, abuses them. And he said, it says in verse 9, he said to his people, look, the people of Israel now outnumber us, and they are stronger than, uh, they are stronger than we are. We must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. If we don't, and if war breaks out, they will join our enemies and they will fight against us. And he's threatened. He's scared of what the Israelites and what they can, uh, of what they can become and what they're going to do. And he sees potential in the Israelite men and wants to do something about it. You think about this tonight. He is a man of full authority, but he is full of insecurity at the same time. He makes life harder for the Israelites. He turns them into slaves, gives them more work, puts more pressure on them, their families, and he tries to break them. And we see what else he does in verse 16. When you help the Hebrew woman, as they give birth, watch as they deliver. If it is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, let her live. Not only does it make life harder for the Israelites in the moment, but he wants to destroy any newborn male that is an Israelite. And he tries to stop the next generation from coming and growing and living because he's afraid to see what potential and what God has in store for their lives. And, you know, tonight, this is exactly what the devil is trying to do. To every single one of us seated in this place, the devil wants to try and rob our destiny. He wants to rob our joy from serving God. He sees that both you and I, we are part of something so powerful and he tries to shut us down because we're a threat to him. Right? If you're doing something right in, in the kingdom of God, you're a threat to the devil. He sees and he wants us to think that we're worthless, that we don't have a part to, a part to play in God's kingdom. But I want to tell you, every single one of you is 
seated here tonight, you all have potential to do something great in the kingdom of God. Listen, I believe these people here tonight, you're doubting yourself. Maybe this is the word for someone. You doubt yourself, you come to church and you think, what am I doing here? What's my worth? And you're thinking, can I even be used by God? I want to tell you that you can. You are loved by God. You've had people in the past talk down about you, saying that you can't become something. Now that is not from God. This is the lies that the devil wants to play in your mind and he wants to rob you of your future. Ephesians 2.10 For we are God's masterpiece and he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Now you find your worth from God tonight. Not from what other people say, not from what other people speak into your life. And so let's look then what stops us from reaching our full potential. Two things real quickly tonight. Number one is no direction. Now people, they have no sense of purpose in life. They disqualified themselves from the potential that God has for them. And there was one time, one of my previous jobs, uh, a mate was looking for a job. And so uh, we had vacancy at work. And so I, I hit up my boss and I told him, you know, this guy, he's keen to come work. He's this, he's that. I was talking him up. Like, as we always do, we want our mates to come work with us. And so uh, my boss gives him a chance, gives him an opportunity to come, gives him an interview. And throughout the whole interview, my boss asks one question, and this question, you have to give the best answer, right? And so the question was, why do you want to work here? Why do you want to, to have a job and a position at this place? And he, repl he replied, because I just want a new job, and I want to leave my current job. And this was a massive red flag for my boss. If you know him, he, was, he, he, he strives bigger thing, for bigger things, right? He doesn't just take on anyone because they want to quit their old job. Proverbs 16, 3, commit your works to the Lord and, thought, and your thoughts will be established. And having no direction in life, it can stop you from receiving a blessing that God wants to provide for you. But when you commit yourself and you dedicate your, thing, your, your, your life to the things of God, and He will bring the best of you, He will use you to the full potential that you have in the kingdom tonight. And so that's number one, is that people have no direction. Number two this evening is... Wrong influence. We can be surrounded by uh, people around us that, you know, take us the wrong way, influence, influence us to doing things that we shouldn't be doing. I used to work as a youth worker. It was a fun job. It was a good job. A lot of, uh, you know, kids that tested a lot of uh, our patience. Uh, but praise God for that. You know, one thing about this job is that it was sad to see so many youth they would come on the program because they had wrong influences around them. What's to be fair, a lot of them had great potential. If you got to know one of these young youth and you really uh, spoke to them and you had a one-on-one -on -one connection with them, you got to see that their life shouldn't have been like that. They shouldn't be where they, where they are today. But because they were influenced by people around them, their families at home and their support system, this is how their life turned out. And I want to tell you this evening that the importance of having the right environment around us is important. The people that we uh, hang out with at school, the people that we work with, we need to be the ones that are influencing them, not them influencing us. 1 Corinthians 15.33 Evil company corrupts good habits. It's important this evening, church, that you choose your friends wisely. You either get friends who can speak into your life or you get friends that won't, they won't speak into your life. They'll make your life miserable. They'll ruin your destiny. They'll make you do the moonwalk. I'm not going to attempt it. But they'll make you backslide. And I want to tell you that that's not what God has for you. God has better friends for you in the kingdom of God if you choose and if you search. Maybe you're seated here tonight and you've had a rough upbringing. The good news for you is that you're in the right place. You've come to church tonight, you've worshipped God, and you're, you're ready to hear from God. And God can use you. You have brothers and sisters in Christ that will help you, that will encourage you, edify you to become a strong disciple. But you must choose who you hang out with and the times that you're out, who you choose to be around. 
we see Jesus and Matthew 2. He has a similar story to our main text uh, this evening. Matthew 2, 13 says, After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. The angel said, Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child and kill him. This is talking about Jesus. The people, they were coming, they were excited about the new, bro- new birth of the new king. And so people were coming to worship him. But King Herod, he was threatened because there was going to be a potential king. Someone that was going to take his place, a savior to save the world. And no doubt this evening that the devil would have hated this too. Knowing that there was going to be a new king in town, spread the love of God, the devil would have hated it. And so my question this evening, as I close this first point, is are you a threat to the devil? When people look at your life, when the devil views your life, are you a threat to him? Or was he threatening you? Let's look secondly then at the task for potential. Some things that we need to do, some things that we need to put in place so that we can live up to our full potential. And I look around this evening and I see so many beautiful faces. I see so many people with full potential that God can use you. But it means it's going to require some things from us tonight. And so let's look at that. How can we reach our full potential? Number one is you must use your gifts from God. Now, God doesn't just give us, give us gifts just so that we can store it away and just keep it safe in a box. He wants us to use our gifts tonight. If you have a dog, uh, you know many times um, dogs catch fleas. One of the most annoying insects, right? Besides, besides all of the annoyingness of a flea, I learned something new about it. Okay? And so... A flea has a vertical jump of about 36 inches, which is around about just over 90 centimeters, okay? And you think about that, a small little flea has a vertical jump of over 90 centimeters. Uh, I, I'm not going to do the math here, but that's, that's pretty high. And to all my short people, to all my small people, we have hope. We have hope. We can, we can jump. We can, we'll get there. But if you put a flea in a jar tonight, if you, put a, if, you put, if you catch a flea and you put it in a jar, you close the lid, this flea knows to jump up and down, up and down. And it will continue to do that. It will hit the top of the lid and it will come back down for, uh, hit, uh, go to the top again, hit the top and come back down. And over time, the brain starts to, to function. I can't make it out of this jar. And so uh, it knows that it can't reach the full 90 centimeters of its jump. And so what it does is instead of jumping real high, and going for the 90 uh, centimeter mark, what it does is it jumps just below the top of the jar. And so it starts to process that. I can't make it to the top, but what I can do is I just make it just to the top of the, uh, the jar and then fall back down again. And when more, uh, more fleas get added to this, when they start laying eggs and all of these things and, they, and more grows, all of the ones that come after that first one, they start to function the same way as this first flea. What they do is they start jumping, not 90 centimeters, but to the top of the jar and back down and just jumps. Looks like a basketball just jumping up and down. And um, what it does is all of these fleas that come after that first flea, they copy the actions of the first one. And they never get to reach their full potential because the jar is still closed. I want to tell you tonight that if you don't open this jar, you will never see the full potential that God has for your life. My Christian... This evening is, are you reaching your full potential? Ephesians 4 verse 7. But, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's give, uh, gift. Have you been challenged to different heights, to different levels here in God's kingdom? Have you been stirred to step out of the, out of the boat, your comfort zone, and do something for God? Pastor Chris, he preached Sunday night about giving birth to 2025, what does that look like for you? From Sunday night to tonight, what have you done to start working on giving birth to 2025? What are you doing to reach the full potential that God has for your life? You know, I was reading in uh, Acts early this week, and um, it's about, you know, a famous Saul, Paul. He's a man that uses his potential. And you say, man, pre-salvation and after salvation... 
In the world, he was known as a Christian persecutor, killing Christians, killing believers. They were trying to spread the gospel. He was destroying lives, and people were afraid of him. Once he gets saved, he converts, and he becomes a man of God. He becomes a strong Christian, and his potential to reach the world is massive. He was obedient to God. He preached everywhere he went. And we see he went from being a bold sinner to a bold Christian. And this is a perfect example tonight of what it looks like to duplicate what you used to do in the world here into God's kingdom. Paul uses his potential for God's purposes. And he understands his task. And think about your life tonight and what you can become. If this is Paul, what can you do for the kingdom of God? I'm pretty sure no one here has killed any Christians but I want to tell you that you can become a great Christian. And just like Paul, preach the gospel. Go out and be willing to use what you used to have in the world and apply it in the kingdom of God. And that's number one, is to use your gifts from God. Number two is to stay persistent. Stay persistent. Persistency turns dreams into achievements. Dreams don't achieve itself. You, know, you, don't need, a, uh, you need to put an effort and be persistent this evening and I know people who have a dream and it always stays as a dream it's like me saying that I have a dream to be skinny again it's not going to happen if I don't do anything about it right I'm gonna I'm gonna keep dreaming about being skinny if I don't do anything about it you need to lose weight you need to be persistent in training and eating what you eat you will only see results if you stay persistent when reaching the potential that God has for us, we need to be sticking to the foundations of Christianity. Not going off when everything is not going your way. When things seem impossible, when there's a dark cloud over your, your mind, that you can stay persistent knowing that God is in control. You know, one obstacle isn't an excuse for you to quit and give up. You know, it's sad to see that people with so much potential would just give away their future because of one mistake, because of one battle. James 1.12, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. As we close the second point this evening, understand that when God is silent, it doesn't mean God isn't with you. It doesn't mean that God isn't there with you. We sang tonight, Waymaker, even when I don't see it, he's working. It's not just a song that we sing in church. It's something that we can believe with all of our hearts, knowing that God is always with us, regardless if we see him or not, regardless if we hear from him or not, that God is always with us. I mean, let's look thirdly, and as we close then, at the treasure of potential. The best part about living to your potential is that you get to live out the life that God has for you. What you thought you couldn't become, what others said that you couldn't become, that you can become that person, and you can prove them wrong, you can prove yourself wrong. This is what I love about conversion, about people getting saved, and anyone and everyone who gets saved, it's a miracle, but it's a miracle of God, and God loves every single one of us equally. Right? Sometimes we think this person is getting elevated, therefore God loves this person more. That's not how God works. God loves every single one of us the same. He doesn't treat us like how we treat the favorite box, favorite chocolate box. Right? We eat the picnic, we take out the Turkish delight. We eat the crunchy, we take out the cherry ripe. Right? God doesn't treat us like that. It's like having multiple kids. You don't say to one, I love you more than the other. I hope you do. Oh, I hope you don't, sorry. You look at them as your children who have potential and that God can use them. You don't do favorites. Therefore, God doesn't do favorites with us. It's the same way that God views us this evening, that we're all his children. And that's the good news for us, is that he loves us regardless of our backgrounds and where we've come from. And that you can live to his full potential. And that's the first treasure. Number two is that you get to see the potential for other people's lives. You know, being out in Mount Ross School, pioneering, no doubt it's any different here, but seeing people walk through the church doors, hearing their stories, seeing them get saved, and seeing what God is doing in them now, that's heart, heart, it warms my heart. 
right? Knowing that we get to play a part in seeing people go in Christ. Knowing that we were once that person who walked through those doors, a visitor, someone cared for us, someone loved us, and they saw potential for us. And that we can return that same favor for all those that walk into these churches, uh, our churches, and you get to see and help those that were once like you and tell them that they have potential. I close with a few stories. We all know these celebrities. Number one, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Right? We know who this guy is. Heard a few laughs over here. And um, we know and we see all his muscles. We see the smile on his faces, on his face, sorry. And we see the fame and the person that he is today, the success that he has. Right? We see everything, but we don't see what, what was in the background, what the, the battles that he went through, the setbacks, the financial struggles. The stages where he fell into depression. The rock fall into depression. What? That's crazy, right? But he's just a normal hum human being like us who once wanted to give up, but he continued on. He keep fighting the good fight and we see today who he is because of that, because of what he did in the background. And it's important for you and I to understand tonight that when we don't give up, God can use us God, God will use you to the full potential that you could ever imagine. You know, some people, most of us, we, we only think this is where we can be. But God has more for us. This is our level of thinking. But God goes beyond all of that tonight. We see David in the Bible. No one saw potential for his life. A young shepherd boy, forgotten at the farm. He was left to tend the family sheep. Everyone's asking, where's this young boy, David? Out of all of the brothers that were supposed to get anointed to be king, they chose David. First Samuel 16, 13. So Samuel took the horn of the oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. He ends up being known as one of the greatest, right? We know his story, defeating Goliath in the next chapter. And now there's a whole story recorded of David in the Bible that is going to be told forever. A man with no potential, that people thought he was worthless. People thought he wasn't going to make it, and he becomes king. And just like these people, you and I, we have great potential. We are ordinary people with great potential that God can use us. My question for you is, who are you allowing to write your story? Will you complete your story? Will you continue to serve God? Will you continue to allow God to use you to the greatest of things that he has in store for you. Only you can do that tonight. If you want to see the potential in everything God has for your life, you have to live and stay persistent with the things of God. And without a doubt this evening, God will unlock your calling and you'll see far more than what you could ever see. And you would, I'm telling you, this is the blessing that you can have if you stay persistent, that you can see all that God has for your life. Your brothers and sisters that make it with you, that's the encouraging thing that you can see for your life. Amen. That's all I have for us. Why don't we bow our heads, close our eyes in this place this evening. Respect to God, respect to each other. No one's looking around. Real quickly, these people in this place. These many new faces here. And I don't know who you are, or where you've come from tonight. I don't tell you that we serve a God that loves you. And these people you... You're not right with God. You're living in sin. These things in your heart that you need to get rid of. You know that if you were to die this evening, that heaven will not be your home. I want to tell you that we have the hope. And that it's only found in Jesus Christ tonight. And this weekend, we're going to be celebrating Easter. And Easter, praise God, we get to celebrate, have chocolate, all of these things. But there's more to that. It's not just about the chocolate bunnies, but it's about our Savior who came over 2,000 years ago to die on a cross for you and I to replace our sin so that we could be forgiven and set free. These people that you know with all your heart, that these things hidden in your life and you know that there's sin and you need to deal with that, you need to repent. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ.
Jesus rose again on the third day so that we could have life again. And that is good news for you and I this evening. So quickly, while heads are bowed, eyes are closed, these people in, here in this place tonight, your heart's not right with God, and you know that you need to repent. If you'd do one thing for me, if you would uh, raise up your hand in this place, with no one looking around, amen, praise God. God sees your hand, my brother. God sees your hand up in the front here. Amen, praise God. God sees all of these hands. Praise God for honest hearts. Praise God. God sees your hands. How many more would there be? You join these honest hearts. You raise your hand, you can put it back down. Backslider. Backslider. You know your heart's not right with God. We serve a God of second chances and I want to tell you that you can still unlock your potential tonight. That God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. If you would just come home and receive his grace, and he'll set you free. Quickly, how many more would there be? You join these honest hearts all across this place. And may God seize your hand, sister. These hands going up all across this place. Final call. If that's you, your heart's not right with God. And make heaven your home. You raise up your hand and we acknowledge that. And we praise God. All those, you raised up your hand. If you do one thing, you come out to the front. We're going to get some altar workers to come. We've got a, a few men up the front here, some ladies to come. Real quickly, altar, altar workers, praise God for honest hearts. If you want to come, you can still come this evening. It's not too late to come give your life to Christ. Praise God. Speaking to the church now. Unlocking your potential. We are people with potential. We're ordinary people. There's nothing good about me, nothing good about what I can do, but it's about what God can do through me. And tonight, that's available for you. Every single person in this place, you've doubted, you've thought God can't use me in the kingdom, and maybe you're, you've been, you're, you're newly saved here and you just think that God can't use you. God can use you, and He will use you if you allow Him to. So before I open up these altars, I want you to think about all the potential in your life and everything that God holds for you. Ask God to reveal that to you at these altars. Let God speak to you. Let God help you. And when these altars are open, you can come. You can come pray this evening, spend some time with God. Don't let this just be another uh, an ordinary time where we come to the altars, but let it do something in your life, in your heart. God, unlock the potential for my life. Help me to see what more you have for me. Without God, we are nothing. And praise God, we have a God that sent his only son to die on a cross for you and I so that we could live this life that we have today. We can have salvation. We can be in the right mind, have a clear conscience. Spend as much time as you need. Let God speak to you. God, use me. Use me. I give myself away. Yes. Sing out the song. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Self so you can use me here. I am here. I stand, Lord. My life is in your hand, Lord. I'm lost. Your desires revealed in me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Self 
different way so you can use me take my heart take my life as a living sacrifice all my dreams all my plans Lord I place them in your hand I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me here I am here I stand Lord my
around tonight and I see people worshipping God, that warms my heart. Gives me goosebumps to know what God is doing here in this place tonight. Young men, young women, disciples, willing to be used by God. Don't let that fade away. Don't let that spirit go. And when you go away tonight, wherever you go for fellowship, speak of the things of God. What you can become as disciples, brothers and sisters. Man, I believe God has got far more bigger plans than we could ever imagine. And every single one of you is going to play a massive part to that. Because you all have potential. And God deserves all the glory, regardless of what happens. We give praises to the King. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. Thank you again uh, for coming out to church tonight. Thank you to Pastor uh, for this opportunity. I don't take this lightly, and I do love coming back to our home church and seeing all that God is doing. Really encouraged, and I'll uh, keep sticking at it. And I will see you guys at camp. It's going to be a solid time. Can you say amen? amen. Let's, let's give God praise as our brother Jaden comes back. <laughs> Amen, amen. What an encouraging word that we had tonight from Pastor Damien. Amen. And like you mentioned, we all have potential here. We all have the potential in God uh, to reach that in God's kingdom. Amen. Uh, again, we want to thank you for coming out to service tonight. Please stick around. We have tea and coffee. If you're visiting, we'd love to meet you. And again, a reminder for camp, Easter camp, uh, meeting up this Friday at Camp Adia at 9 a.m. Amen. But again, thank you for coming. We're going to close off in a word of prayer. And if I can ask our brother Lani if he can close us off this evening. Amen. Amen. Have a great night. God bless you all.